Alrighty, uh, this is going to be a blog post about how to take attachments on an item in a SharePoint list in Office 365 and copy them to a document library. Okay, so here we are looking at a list called List with Images. What I've done is actually created an in-text form on here. So if you see, if I click on New, you should see an in-text form pop up shortly. Now, this lets me fill in a little bit of information and add some attachments. What I'm going to do is actually fill in a form really quickly on my phone. And what that means is that I'll take some photos, I'll attach it to the item, click on save, and we should be good to go. So let's see, we've got one item in here now. And bear with me, I'm going to take a quick photo and attach it to an item. Okay, so I've created a filled in a form. I actually took a couple of photos and I've submitted it. So let's refresh, see if it's gotten in there. This all came from my phone. There we go, my vlog. Okay, well, it's meant to be blog, but vlog example. And if I click on it, I'll see the form and there should be two attachments. Perfect. All right, two attachment files. Now, what I want to happen is I want to run a workflow on this that will then go and take those two attachments and dump them into a document library I've created called My Pictures, right? So it's just a regular SharePoint document library. All right, so what we'll do, let's have a look at what the workflow looks like. You'll see it's a little bit probably longer than you would think it would be, uh, but there's a little bit of work you have to do because there isn't just a single action that will just copy attachments to uh, another location. So first of all, we're going to have to build some headers because what we're doing is we're actually going to make a few rest calls. So we're just putting together a couple of headers, right? Nothing too fancy here, a content type and an accept header, and we're storing it in a dictionary called request headers. So pretty straightforward there. And then we do a web service call, right? We're using the call HTTP web service action. We are performing a get. Now this is what the URL looks like. You'll see all the red tokens we've actually just uh, inserted through either an item property or a workflow context uh, property, things like that. So you'll see here, we're getting the current site URL. There's already a slash in it, so we don't have to worry about that. Underscore API, and you can see we're making a REST call to something called get, uh, get by title. And we're getting a list, so we're getting the current list. And then in there, we're looking for the current item and there is a property called attachment files. Now, once that, <coughs> excuse me, once that runs, we're going to store the result in a response content dictionary, right? Just a dictionary to store all the, the response. Now, we're not doing any checking to see if it worked or didn't work. We're just going to assume it did. Now, we're going to do a get an item from a dictionary. Now, this action will let me pull some information out. So in there, there is a node called D, and there is also uh, a, so child nodes called results. We're going to get all those and store them in a temporary dictionary because what that's going to contain is all the actual file information. All righty. So now we've done the REST call. We've gotten some data. We've stored the results in a dictionary, and now we want to go and parse that data. So in this case, we have account items. What this will do is actually give me the number of attachments that we have, so number of results that are in that uh, temporary dictionary. Let's double check this, yep, temp dictionary, and we're storing it in response count. This is how many attachments we have. Now, we're going to have to loop through, as we parse the data, we're gonna to have to loop through that dictionary and go through item by item. So we have loop n times, n being that response count. So if we have, in this case, we have an item with two attachments, so this will be two. So we're gonna loop through these two times, but in order to get the appropriate item, we have to have an index, right? Now, I don't think there's an index in here, right? There isn't, there's just a, uh, you know, this is how many times I want to loop through. So what we do is we use this set workflow variable to store zero, zero being the first index into uh, like an array or a dictionary we're storing it in this loop count. All right, so as we're going through this loop, the first thing we do is we pull out from d slash results slash whatever the loop count is right now, which will start off being zero, being the first item, and we're getting a server relative URL. We have the same action, except this time, 
we're getting the file name. So the server relative URL will have things like slash site name slash list slash uh, item number slash whatever, the actual name of the attachment. And then file name will just have the actual name of the file name. All right. And finally, in here, the important part here is that we're incrementing that loop counter so that the next time through the loop, we're going to be equal to one, so we'll get the next item or next attachment. All right. Yep, that's just storing that somewhere. Okay. So here is where we do a little bit more of the heavy lifting. What we're doing is we're putting together a REST call to copy that attachment to my document library, right, called My Pictures. So here we've put together the current site URL. We're making an API call to a site called uh, a site, and we're trying to get that site. So in this case, we're doing, uh, sorry, getting a file. So in this case, we're going to get file by server relative URL, and we're putting in that URL into here. And once we have it, we want to run a copy to command. And here, str new URL. So basically, it's a new new URL string, and the destination. So in this case, my subsite is called evangelism. My document library is called my pictures, and I'm going to keep the original file name. And the other thing I did is I set this boolean overwrite to equal true so basically i don't want this to fail because the file already exists i just want to overwrite that file uh, and then we're storing it in a copy to url now really i could have done this in the actual call http web service action but i did it in here because you'll see directly after the build i have a log action that was just for a little bit of debugging we're just logging the url there and then finally we do our call http web service action where there's my URL. This time we're doing a post, we're not doing a get. Uh, passing in the same headers, nothing really changes there. The only thing uh, you'll find is you will need to store the response code somewhere, so make sure you create a variable, because you'll see the little red asterisk maybe uh, making it that it's a required field, because I found I was having issues of why, why was my workflow not uh, publishing. I didn't set this. Okay. So there we go, that's pretty much all it's doing. And it's gonna loop through this, uh, go through each attachment. So back to my document library. You see I have nothing in here. I'm gonna go over here and I'm going to go to workflows. I'm gonna manually start this workflow. There it is there. So I'm gonna click on it, that should kick it off. And I wanna look at the workflow history as it's running. So let's have a look in here. All right, it started, so we click on it. Now, you'll see here, I've got, I just logged the site URL, right? So that's my site right there. My response count, which basically means how many attachments do I have to this current item, which is two. I'm going through and iterating through. So the first one, here's the file name. This one is the server relative URL to that file. There's my REST call that I'm making, right? So again, this is just for a little bit of debugging. And then the response I got was okay, which means that it copied. If I refresh this, you'll see now we have gotten a second file name. We've got same thing, server relative URL, the REST URL, and again, we've got another okay, and we're done. So the workflow has completed. If I go into my pictures document library, Click on refresh. I should now have two pictures. There we go. A little bit of Raspberry Pi that I've been messing around with. So you can see, not that hard to do, but it is a little bit of a little bit of work in here. Uh, so potentially, what you could do is actually have this as a workflow that is almost like a little utility workflow that you can call from other workflows. So keep that one in mind. Uh, I'll share this design with you, and hopefully, you can use this in any future workflows that you need to. Uh, take attachments from an item. Now, I did it from an in-text form, but really it has nothing to do with what created the item. We're dealing with an actual SharePoint list item. So in this case, this could be a regular SharePoint list uh, with an out-of-the-box SharePoint form. It could be an in-text form. It could be something else. So whatever creates that item and adds, adds attachments to it, this workflow will be able to uh, read those and copy those across. Hopefully this is helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.